Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebi. Today we're going to be doing a replay of our tutorial for Starburst. It's a pattern that's in my book, Fat Quarter Workshop, and it's a bestseller on Amazon, but you can get a signed copy from us over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. I really love this pattern because it really allows you to show off those two pretty cut up fabrics. We made a new version right over here, and you can see that we have really big diamonds, and then we have some small diamonds, and and you can have that alternate. So in this case, we've got big diamonds here and in another block, they're gonna be the little diamonds and that block is gonna reverse. So we made up a new kit with Migration. It's a new line from Free Spirit Fabrics and we have kits available while supplies last. We also still have some fat quarter bundles available if you just wanna grab that. But I really like this line. I think it's one of those that I think you need some inspiration of what you're gonna do with it. I was just talking with a staff member yesterday of I love it, I got it, but I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. So today we're gonna give you an idea of what you can do with it. 12 fat quarters is just enough to make the lap size version. And so it goes fairly quickly. Um, our team member who put together the top was able to do it in about a week. So that's pretty good. And that was with working as well. So that's pretty, pretty good there. So I really like this one. We're gonna use a 60 degree triangle ruler to cut the diamonds out. It's really important that you use a clear view or one that has a pointy tip. And we have those available on our website as well. If you use a blunt tip, you are not gonna get enough diamonds and the sizing is gonna be different for everything. So it's not gonna work out right. So that's super important. It doesn't have to be the clear view, but they have to have points on all three corners. It can't have one flat top on one of those. All right, so let's check out this video tutorial. Like I said, it is one of my favorites. I like going back to it again and again because it really shows off the fabric really well. We're really able to have some fun with this. And later in the week, we're also gonna do a tutorial on how I quilted this and did ruler work. All right, let's watch the replay of Starburst. You're going to need an equilateral triangle ruler for this project, and you need one that has the tip. So some of these are missing the top tip and the math is very different for triangle rulers that don't have the tip versus one that do. I use a clear view triangle ruler for all of my 60 degree triangle patterns. So if you like this one and you like some of the other ones, you're gonna use it for more than one pattern because I hate a ruler that you can only use with one thing. This you can use with a lot of them, but make sure that you have one that has the tip because otherwise your math is not gonna work and the pieces will not end up the right size when you go to put your blocks together and it will not be fun. I'm gonna show you how to cut with this. It's pretty easy and I love 60 degree triangle patterns because they look super complicated but there's no Y seams and they're super fast and easy to put together because pretty much once you have your diamonds cut, your block is almost together at that point. All right, so I'm starting off by putting the inch line even with the bottom of my strip and my point is even with the top. That way I know that everything is nice and square. Now, holding that in place, I'm going to go ahead and cut down the top left side. I'm gonna remove this piece. All right, so now I'm gonna flip my ruler around and I'm. this is the last time I have to flip it around for whenever I'm cutting diamonds. So, you'll see what I mean in a second. So now I'm lining this up so that my inch line is even with the top of the strip my point is even with the bottom, and my inch line is even with the top of where I've cut in here. So that way I'm gonna have a nice even diamond when this is all done. Okay, so as you can see, I pulled my diamond apart, it looks really good. Now I don't have to flip my ruler around anymore while I'm cutting the diamonds. So I can go ahead and just slide that over Keep the inch line even with the top, the point even with the bottom, and then the edge of that ruler even with the top edge uh, that we just cut. So I sized everything so that you can get everything for two blocks from two fat quarters for your focal prints. And so each one, you're gonna have a set of large diamonds and a set of small diamonds, and the measurements and cutting instructions for that are in your pattern, Starburst, available at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. So you're gonna cut your sets of large diamonds and your sets of small diamonds, and you're gonna pair those together with colors that look good. 
And then we're also going to have some background triangles. So I'm going to show you how to cut those triangles next because it's a little bit different process, but pretty similar to what we just did. So it starts off the same way where we're going to get an inch line even with the bottom and the tip even with the top. And you want to move as far over to the salvage as you can so you can get as many out of it as possible. And you can cut these. Um, the instructions have it where you're cutting it across the width of fabric. So you can cut two at a time when you're doing this. Um, I just am working with a fat quarter here for the video, but definitely do it two at a time with that strip folded over on itself. All right, so without moving anything, I'm gonna go ahead and trim up the other side because we need to have triangles for this. Now we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna line it up just like before, except now my left edge is even exactly with the edge that we just cut. I still have an inch line going across the top and now my point is even with the bottom of the strip. So I'm gonna cut up the side here. Now I'm just gonna keep flipping that ruler around and cutting as I go. We will have a little bit more cutting to do at the very end because our rows don't end even. So we have to kind of create a setting triangle that's on a 60 degree triangle, so half of one. And I'm gonna show you how to do that when we're assembling the rows because I don't wanna overwhelm you with too much information when you don't need it just yet. So right now we're gonna move on to sewing the blocks together and then we'll come back to our cutting boards a little bit later. So I mentioned earlier that when you're choosing your fabrics, you wanna pick two that work together because those are the two that you're gonna to need to make a set of two blocks. So I picked from my fat quarters, this one with a nice blue background and a large flower and the orange, because even though you can really only barely see it, there is a lot of orange in this fabric, so it works really well together. And then I've got my background triangles next to it. So I'm gonna show you how to line these up and sew them together so that way you get perfect angles every time. It's pretty easy to do, but it's a little weird because we're used to seeing things line up like exactly on the sides. And with 60 degree triangles, sometimes they go in opposite directions. So once you kind of get used to seeing that, it gets a lot easier. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna flip your piece over. I'm gonna move the piece underneath it away so you're only looking at one. And I'm gonna line up the points for that top piece. And really I'm just flipping them right sides together. I just took this and flipped it right over. So easy peasy. And if you've done this right, this part here should be about a quarter inch away from the edge that we're gonna sew on. So I'm gonna show you how to mark that. If you take your ruler and you just line up the quarter inch with the edge of your piece, you can mark that. And you can see that where my pink line is, is also right where the sort of divot is, the little valley where those come together. So if you want, you can pin those just to hold it in place. It's not necessary, but if it's your first time doing it, better safe than sorry. Just go ahead and give that a little pin. This top part I'm not gonna pin because the points just line up real nicely together. Then we're gonna do the same thing with the second piece. And I like to do two blocks at a time as I'm doing this because it just makes it go faster for me. I mean, it takes the same amount of time, but I feel like it's a lot easier to keep myself organized and I get some immediate gratification because in an hour or two, I can get a pair of blocks together and then I feel like I'm making progress as opposed to if I just spent hours and hours just sewing these little things together, that would be a little discouraging to me. All right, so now I'm gonna set my sewing machine up to sew a quarter inch seam. And grabbing the piece that I lined up before, I'm just going to start sewing just like I would any regular piece. Just, it looks a little different because we got a little bit hanging off to the side. So now I'm gonna press these two pieces open. And to press them open, I first open them with my fingertips. And then with the nose of the iron going straight down the center of that seam, I just sort of go straight down. You don't wanna have any wiggles. Um, it literally looks like a wiggle on the back. And then it means you have a pleat on the front. And you can see that that turned out really nicely. So I've got a nice straight edge coming out here. And then everything is nice and even with the top there. 
You also can see here, you can see where my little line was and my seam came out right where that is. So that means that everything is gonna be lined up real nice. I always press my seams open when I'm working with 60 degree triangles. I find that I get a lot better points that way. It makes it easier to line everything up, which you'll see in just a second. And also I can do a lot more exciting things with quilting because it's not so bulky when the seams come together. All right, so here's where it gets exciting. So now we've got something to line up against because we left all those dog ears in. And that's another reason why I like the clear view is because it doesn't chop off any of those dog ears. So you can use them to help you get everything in line and work really nicely. So if I take this and I flip it right sides together, now I have my little dog ear from beneath that I can line up with and sort of give myself a little something to hang on to. So again, I can get that a little pin if I want, not totally necessary. And then down here, these, this little valley should be about a quarter inch away from the edge. Let's go ahead and measure. So I've got the quarter inch line on the edge of the fabric. And when I make that mark, it is almost exactly where this little valley is. So that's perfect. That's exactly where I want it to be. You can go ahead and pin that when you are getting used to doing this. Eventually you'll be able to eyeball that and you won't need to pin at all. All right, so I've got that one ready to go. We're also going to flip this right sides together, line up that dog ear and go ahead and let the other dog ear come out just a little bit. All right, let's get these sewn together. You can and should chain piece these. You've got quite a few to do for each block, especially if you're doing two at a time. It'll make everything go a lot faster. So I'm gonna press these open as well. Same process as the other. Just wanna make sure that I'm not flipping any of the other seams going the wrong way when I'm doing it. It gets to be a little more challenging as your block becomes bigger, but right now it's pretty easy. All right, so when I'm pressing seams open, I usually like to hit it from both sides just to get it super flat. So now we're gonna do the same thing we just did, just our pieces are getting bigger. So now I've got my large diamond here and I'm going to lay on the sides of it. The smaller, they're now triangles, equilateral triangles that we just pieced. So you can see it's the exact same process. Here we had a diamond and two triangles. Here we have a diamond, and in this case, it's piece triangles. So same deal, just bigger. I'm gonna go ahead and do it. So I can do both of them at a time, layer that up. And you're gonna have several again to do for each box, so I just do all of this all at one time. The process here is the exact same. You're gonna line up the tip of your triangle with the tip of your diamond, and your edge should come just nice and even. So that way your point is extending about a quarter inch past. So this little bit here, where this little divot is, should be exactly a quarter inch away from the edge of your piece. If you need to, you can mark that, just like we did before, and pin. Go ahead and press these open as well. This is where you do kind of have to make sure that as you're pressing it, I'm not pressing any of these seams in the wrong direction as I go. I just kind of lift my iron up a little bit as I get to a new seam. That way I know I'm not dragging it over. And if you do, you can always just press it back the regular way, the way it's supposed to. All right, so you can kind of quality check here. You should have a nice even line where this is joining your big diamond. And it should be nice and even up here as well. If it's a little bit off, less than an eighth of an inch, that's gonna be okay, you're gonna be all right. But you don't want it to be hugely off, it should be a pretty even line. Now we're gonna repeat sewing the left triangle to our large diamond.
you're done, you're gonna have six of these large pieced equilateral triangles. And you're gonna have three for each half of the block. And I'm gonna show you how to get your halves together next. So y'all know I don't like pinning. I try to avoid it at all costs, but you need it for this part. So what you're gonna do is you're going to lay them right sides together and working from the top, this is an example of this one ended up a little bit longer than that one. So I'm just going to line up the edges of my orange bits. And I'm making sure that my seams are nice and lined looking at it from above. And then I pin with that seam allowance. So rather than going, you know, across, I'm kind of also going at an angle there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the top. I'm gonna line up those seams so that they're as close to on top of each other as they can be. And I'm gonna go ahead and pin that together. I don't generally pin the top and the bottom. I kind of just arrange those as I'm sewing, but I'm gonna go ahead and sew the bottom half of the block as well at this time. So now I'm just gonna kind of manually manipulate those points at the top of the block to make sure that they are together. I'll go ahead and sew with that same corner right seam. When I get to the seam allowance, what I do is I stop with my needle down in the first half of that seam allowance. Then it kind of acts as a pin and holds everything together so I can remove my pin and I keep sewing and not lose any of that accuracy. Once I get to the second part, that's when I will arrange my second point to make sure that they are in line and I'm just gonna sew down to complete the seam. Repeat as many times as necessary to finish your block halves. This is where you can start to check and see and make sure your points are lining up nicely. If they're a little bit off, mine is just a teeny bit. I'm not gonna worry about that. We won't ever be able to tell once it's quilted and washed, it'll just look cute. So now we're gonna do the same thing, just we're putting the left side to the center. One really fun thing that happens now that we're putting this together is you've got your little dog ear here and that lines up with the point. So we have points lining up on both ends now, which is really nice. And another reason why I love the Cleaver Triangle Ruler because you keep all those points to use as reference marks. So in order to have this video not be super, super long. I've already made the other halves of these blocks and you wanna keep them as halves because we're gonna sew them together in rows and you'll see what I mean here. So we're gonna sew seams together along here. That way we don't ever have to sew a Y seam in because otherwise if you had sewn it like this, you would have all these crazy seams that you would have to sew out and that's not fun. So next I'm gonna show you how to sew this together into a row, and then we're gonna talk about adding those setting triangles together and joining our rows. Okay, so I've already pieced together the row that goes next to it. So you can see here how everything joins together right along those seam lines for the block, and you're gonna piece them into horizontal rows so you can avoid those Y seams. So I've got my first one and my second one next to it. So what I wanna do is I'm going to slide this row down a little bit so we can put this in the center. And now I need to pin right where all of these seams are. I'm gonna show you my two pinning method to get perfect joints every single time. And this is where it kinda is a little weird when you're sewing with those 60 degree triangles because it is just a little odd and a little interesting to get used to because you can see these are going in two totally different directions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a pin in where all of these three seams join together and then I'm also going to put a pin in just where all these seams join together right at the tip. 
Now, I'm going to pinch that so that my pin is going straight up and down through the fabric. If I were to rock this at this point and just pin it, it wouldn't work. What I would do is I would shift the top layer forward and the bottom layer back and my points would no longer be lined up. So I take a second pin and I pin that one right across that seam line. That way I've got my pin going straight up and down, holding everything together, and then my one going across that will hold it that way when I sew. So I just keep repeating that, getting my points together as I work my way across. Where I don't normally pin these bottoms, I will just use those dog ears to line it up as a guide as I'm sewing through. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew my quarter inch seam and I'm gonna sew just one needle width to the right of where all those three seams come together and that will make sure that I keep my points intact. All right, so we're gonna press that seam open and you're just gonna repeat that to get all your rows together. Then we're gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how to assemble your rows and get perfect joints there as well. I am really happy with these joints. If you wanted to, you could pick from here to here and readjust and re-sew, but I'm really happy with how this is going, so I'm gonna keep on sewing my row together. So once you get your entire row together, you end up with this half equilateral triangle that's missing. So we've got to cut those, I'm gonna show you how to do it. The only tricky part is that you need to have a seam allowance past the center, so that way it all is nice and square and you don't lose any points when you do your binding. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, you can get bigger rulers, but I find the eight inch is perfect size for most things. And you're gonna use the 30 and 60 degree lines on your ruler. Most of your large rulers already come with that. So mine is the Ulfa Frosted. And you can see here that there's a 60 degree line and a 30 degree line. There's also 45 and 15, but today we're just gonna focus on 30 and 60. Um, if you don't have the Ulfa rulers, Fiskars also has the line, so just check and make sure that yours has it. It gets a little, it's a little bit of getting used to as you sort of learn to flip the ruler around, but it's not hard at all. All right, so I'm still working from this fat quarter. And so if you were doing this, you would wanna make sure that you are folding it with, you know, two sides together across the width of fabric. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna neaten up this edge and I'm gonna make sure that I'm working with a nice square edge here. All right, so I'm gonna set this to the side. It's so time for a new blade on this guy. All right, so I need to create that quarter inch seam allowance. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm lining up the quarter inch mark of my ruler up with that line that I just squared up. And I'm gonna take my friction gel pen because it'll go away with heat. And I'm gonna mark that right down here. Now I'm gonna line up my ruler so that the 60 degree line is even with the bottom of my strip. And again, to get the cutting instructions and how wide the strip needs to be, just go to shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com and download the pattern for Starburst and you'll see it. All right, so I've lined it up. So 60 is even with the bottom and the edge of the 60 degree mark is even with that hash mark. That way I'm gonna have my quarter inch seam allowance and everything is good to go. And then my ruler is going all the way up and across. If you wanted to, you could mark all these first So you can kind of see where you're going. So here you can see I marked off what's going to be a half 60 degree triangle, but there's the point is here and then I've got my quarter inch going past there. But I'm just gonna go ahead and cut. But if it makes you feel comfortable, you can go ahead and mark all this first and then cut it once you feel like you know you have everything in the right spot. Over that one more time since it's time for a new blade here. All right, so there's one. So now I need to mark my quarter inch again. So I'm lining it up so that the quarter inch is even with the top. 
And then I've got a hash mark even with the bottom here. And if I wanted to, again, I could draw that line, but in this case, I know everything's good to go. So I'm just gonna slice. So now we have two and you can see they're going in opposite directions. We're gonna keep doing this going down. So let me come over here again and I'm going to mark that quarter inch again, the bottom. And then you're just gonna keep repeating your steps. And you can see it kind of takes a minute because there's a 60 degree line here and in this case it's going the right way. But if I were to rotate it this way and get the 60 degree line, then it obviously is not going in the right direction. So you just have to get used to working with your ruler and using those lines that maybe you haven't used before to cut. But once you get the hang of it, it really is quite easy. So you're just gonna keep on cutting until you have the number of setting triangles that you need for the pattern. So now you can see how this nicely fills in the extra part of the block. So I can flip this over, right sides together, and I can match up those that point with the dog ear. I can put a little pin in there if I want. Help keep that steady. And then up here, the point of it is going to match up with the point from below. So you're gonna have that quarter inch that we left hanging out like a little dog ear, which you can see better right there. Now, even though I pinned that with this side up, my setting triangle, I'm gonna sew it with this side up. That way I can continue to sew just one needle width on the seam side of where all these seams come together. That way I don't lose any of those points. If it makes you feel better, you can always throw in a couple extra pins along here. I usually don't, as I've done this a lot. But if they are new to that, they may make you it go a little better. Just like we've been doing all along, I'm gonna go ahead and press the seam open. So you're gonna add these setting triangles to all of your row ends, and then we're ready to sew our rows together and complete those blocks. So now is when we finally get to join our blocks as we sew everything into rows. You'll notice that these blocks are offset. So in one, the blocks are gonna to come together, and in two, you're only gonna see the half block and the other block will connect in the next row that's to it. So that means on the ends, you'll see half blocks on every other row. It'll make more sense when you see the whole thing completed. But everything we've been doing to date, we're just doing again, just it's bigger. And so there's gonna be a lot more pins, but it's the exact same process of when we were putting our blocks together, where we're gonna be looking for those seams that we have to pin straight through to keep the points together versus the ones that kind of go off to the side and are parallel to each other. All right, so I'm gonna start with this corner here. I'm gonna get those seams lined up so that they're right on top of each other. And one big tip is the dog ears can help keep you in line, but don't go exactly by them because sometimes the dog ears might end up in a slightly different place. And if you just line those up, your seams won't always match, which I know that sounds weird and it should, but it doesn't always. What's better is to kind of look at it from above and just kind of line those up and get your seams as close to on top of each other as you can. So this one, we've got a block going together, so we've got a lot of seams going in the same direction. Then when we get to the center, that's the two pinning method where I'm gonna put my pin through where all the seams come together on one side and where they all come together on the other side. So you can see I've got my dog ears nice and lined up there, so that's kind of nice. So put that pin in. Then we're going back to some seams that are going in the same direction. So I just wanna line those up on top of each other, keep them going off in the same direction. All right, so that's how you pin for the blocks where the blocks are coming together. And when you pin where it's two half blocks coming together, that's where we have to do a lot of that double pinning. So I'll show you that next. All right, so this one, you know, you're, it's not gonna be horribly obvious if you don't get it straight in because it's all background fabric. So 
it's not the end of the world if all your points don't join perfectly, but you wanna practice and getting it good because it does matter on these where you've got points coming together. So I found the tip of my point there and the tip behind it. I'm gonna pinch that in place and then using my second pin, coming across the side to keep those points nice and in alignment. I really love this. I use it almost every time I do triangles, not just 60 degree, to help make sure I don't lose those points. It's like this one, for example, my points are not exactly a quarter inch away from the edge. So I can see, it's probably hard to show on camera, but the bottom one is, is just a hair to the side here. And this way, if I were to just line up my edges, I would have lost one of those points. But this way, I'm just gonna lose like maybe a little bit of a seam allowance, like less than an eighth of an inch. No one's gonna know, cause no one's gonna be peeking on the inside of my quilt. And, but it's gonna look like I did it perfect. All right, I've got one more double seam and then we're going back to uh, one where the blocks are together again. And we've already shown you that. So I'm gonna sew this together and I'm gonna show you some photos of what it looks like when it's all done. I'm super excited for how this quilt turned out. I'm very excited about how it all looks and I didn't mean it to be like perfectly fit in my daughter's bedroom, but it does. Uh, she's very obsessed with butterflies right now and there are a lot of butterflies in this fabric and the colors really work with what she already has. So she's already claimed this quilt. It's gonna live at the shop for a little bit first. And of course I have to get it quilted, but you can see how good the top looks in her room. Um, I really love how this turned out. I've been wanting to do this pattern for a long time. So when I saw this line and I could see how easily I could make it work and to have you know those two colors uh, in each block and it really does a lot of color variation but you don't have to think a whole lot when you're figuring out your fabrics. You kind of just have to make sure that you always have sets of two that go good together. I kind of tried to pick a busy print with a not so busy print so that way one part would shine and the other part would kind of fade to the background. Um, when I was laying it out, I just kind of tried to make sure that I didn't have any chunks of color in one place. So like those deep browns that really stand out were scattered around a bit. That way it's not like that's a whole lot of brown in one corner. That would be not so good. So those are the things that you should look at when you're looking to lay yours out. Again, this is a really easy quilt to change the size of because since you're assembling the blocks in sets of two, you can just reduce um, however many fat quarters you're gonna use. Um, to make this quilt in sets of two. So if you wanna do it with your stash and bundle and just get background yardage to go with it, really easy to do. You can just do it with the 12 and have a smaller quilt versus the 20 that I used that turned out to work with a full size bed. We do have kits available while supplies last. Just go over to shop.quiltedxonless.com and you can get yours. And you can also purchase the pattern and do it with your own stash and bust that as well. It is called Starburst. Thanks so much for following along. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to our channel and make sure you hit the bell notification. We'd also love it if you subscribe to emails over at shop.quiltedxonless.com. We send you a 10% off discount code that you can use on your first purchase over there as a thank you for subscribing to our email list. And until next week, Happy quilting.